Hello, everyone. On come you to this webinar, and this is the second webinar in the webinar series with Dr. Pellegrino. So my name is Peggy Storvakka, and I work as product and export manager for orthodontic appliances at LM Dental. We are very pleased to see this great interest for this webinar series. And through this new channel and this new way of training, we wish to be able to reach many doctors and as many new, new doctors, of course, as possible also, and share information about early treatment and the possibilities to treat malocclusions with LM activator. Some words about practicalities. You will be muted throughout the session, but you can ask questions in the chat or questions section, and we will answer them at the end of the presentation. This session is also recorded, and it's shared on the LM Dental English website, at the same place where you can also register to these webinars. And you will also receive some questions after the webinar, a short survey, and we would be very happy if you could answer. And uh, if you receive this then a second time uh, per email, then of course it's enough that you answer once. Thank you very much for your interest, for your participation, and Dr. Pellegrino, you're welcome to start. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, good afternoon uh, for everyone. And uh, today we will start with the, the second appointment about early orthodontic treatment and in particular way about the use of the orthodontic appliances that are able to guide the eruption of the teeth. And uh, sorry. Okay, uh, this project is uh, uh, composed of five, several, five different parts. Uh, the beginning is about the general use of orthodontic appliance in the uh, early uh, period of the group, and uh, the others are connected with the use of LM activators. Last time, last month, uh, I was speaking about the guidance of occlusion using LM activator eruption guidance appliance. And in particular way, I explain what is an early treatment and uh, which is the concept connected with the eruption guidance of the teeth and why the rule of the teeth is so important during the group. Today, we will speak about the early signs of development of malocclusion in primary and early mixed dentition. In particular way, trying to analyze the first signs and uh, because this is very important to uh, be able to understand what will happen during the group. And normally it is not so easy to decide what to do and when to treat. And at the end, we will see that it is really very important to define, to be able to define a good diagnosis. And uh, I will speak today why we can treat early and when we can treat early. In the next appointments, we will speak about the, the way of the treatment. In particular way, in the next uh, appointment, the next month, I will speak about indication and contraindications of the use of LM activators during this period of the group and why these appliances are so peculiar to treat malocclusions in early period of the group. The fourth appointment is, uh, uh, is connected uh, with the management of the deep bite because the deep bite is uh, so large present in malocclusions and uh, it is not so easy to treat using uh, fixed devices 
and uh, we have a, we will see that we will have a very important opportunity to intercept and to guide the development of this kind of malnutrition. The last appointment will be about the treatment of uh, the open bite malnutrition, and uh, I will show you uh, why I prefer to treat with LM activator and which kind of uh, morphology the LM activator needs to uh, to 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 use to correct, to manage the development of this kind of malocclusion. So today, we will start about early signs um, of, uh, of development of malocclusion. And uh, uh, we can think about this concept. When does an occlusion will become a malocclusion, which is the, the line that define this very not easy to 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 see boundary that the this the determines the need for every treatment or makes us to decide to wait for a treatment later when the in the late mixed dentition or more late when the permanent teeth will be present in the uh, in the mouth, and uh, in during this period, I want to just to remember to you and to me that the tooth movement is a, a key part of facial growth. Normally, we consider the teeth important, but not so important for the general growth. And as Ella showed several years ago, the movement of the teeth is really very important during the growth. And in this process, we will see that the periodontal ligament is really very important with its structure to, to uh, give its contribute to the growth. And the, Perhaps we can say that the periodontal membrane is an equivalent of both of a periosteum and suetus. So it is a very important center of growth. And uh, so we can uh, approach the concept to work with the group. And uh, if we want to use this concept, concept to manage the malocclusion while they are growing up, we need to uh, manipulate to manage the direction and the amount of this uh, of this group and we can use different signals that are working from biological point of view so we will need to use the uh, morphology and uh, the biology the biology that of the teeth that are growing up inside the mouth and the function of the teeth that are working are touching each other between the different arch so that uh, we can uh, have several informations coming from the occlusion to the to the brain and to the muscles but if we want to come back to the uh, uh, topic of today, we can use like a, a template, this paper that was published some years ago from American Association of Orthodontics, that is about the treatment needs. And you can find it easily on the web. And uh, we can connect this, uh, this uh, uh, paper with the option of every orthodontic treatment when and why we uh, need to treat. So if we uh, pay attention to the literature, we can see that some studies say to us, okay, pay attention, because not all the malocclusions uh, need to be treated in a very early period of the growth. But some other papers, says to us that when we have a 
other kinds of malocclusion or some aspects inside a particular malocclusion, we need to intercept, we need to manage, we need to avoid that this kind of malocclusion will increase itself in the bad direction. And in particular way, we will see that we have evidence about posterior cross bite, in particular way with the mandibular shift, class three malocclusion, the vertical problems and the crowding. So, one question that is really very important in my daily work is try to find an answer to this question. What really does keep this in place without the treatment or after the treatment? Because people who want to have this in the correct position and that they want to maintain the aligned teeth and a, a nice smile all life long. But we know that not this, this not always happen. So we have two different questions to find an answer. The first one is why treat hearing? And the second one is the what to treat and what not to treat. Because if we have clear the answers to these two different questions, we just have a, a very large number of uh, situations, critical situations, in which we can uh, approach the, the problem. So, the first question is why treat every? And uh, one of the, uh, of the answers, because we will see that we have different and several answers to this question. One is that, from a biological point of view, skeletal and dental alterations should be corrected as soon as, as they are identified. And we apply this concept when we manage a class 3 malocclusion or a tendency of class 3 malocclusion. But this concept is exactly the same for all other kinds of malocclusions. And uh, if we, we want to find another reason, is that we need to try to give the correct direction to the group so that to create a nice condition around the teeth, around the face, to give the opportunity to grow up in the best way is it possible. And the early treatment is really important in a particular way in our days from a psychological point of view, because uh, uh, it is uh, today is really very important the aesthetic, um, aesthetic uh, feeling uh, for itself and uh, uh, for other people. And uh, we, we know that the early treatment uh, for class 2 malocclusion give uh, an improvement in the facial profile and uh, uh, this is an important particular way to avoid uh, problems to be mocked inside the school and uh, this profile and uh, the smile can improve a lot uh, approaching early and we have several papers that say to us that this psychological and relational um, problem is very important to manage in uh, early period. But another very important, as Professor Rickett published and uh, was speaking about a lot of years ago, is that, uh, that if we treat early, we can treat in an easier way, and the things seem to change in a natural way their relationship and their position. So we, we can uh, uh, look primary dentition and early mixed dentition because of the development of primary dentition and the primary occlusion provides a good prediction of how the occlusion will develop later during the growth until up to arrive to permanent dentition. And uh, 
is it, we, we have to remember, as it was shown from the, um, the, the research of uh, the group of Professor Grabowski, that uh, there is no self-correction of neuromuscular disorders. So the bad habits will not improve in a better way themselves, but all the bad habits will increase and increase and increase in visceral swallowing pattern and tone of the periural muscles will create a lot of problems in early mixed dentition and later in late mixed dentition. So we need to interrupt this uh, problematic relationship, remembering that we have a very strict uh, connection between the function and the, the morphology. And we cannot say what is really very important be, between these two different uh, words, because they are so in so linked each other that they condition in every moment during the grow in all the facial and oral system. And if we consider that we know that there is no self-correction if the system is not working well. It is very clear, it is very easy to understand that in the beginning, the problem is inside the dental alveolar sector. As we can see on this part of the screen, in which the problem is strictly connected with the position of the teeth, but the basal bone in this open bite are not involved. Later, during the growth, we can have that the open bite or other kinds of malocclusion will become something of different. The skeletal area will be connected. And at this point, the correction is possible, but it will be much more complex and we will need more sophisticated biomechanical approach and more complex orthodontic devices. And we have to remember in particular way when we will treat the vertical problems that the vertical increase during the growth is really very important. And we can see in the middle of the of the this slide how is different the phase of a child, of a newborn, in particular way, the perioral factor, the mandible and the upper maxilla area. If we connect this with the same area in the a young adult, and uh, we can see that there is a, a large difference in the morphology of upper maxilla, lower maxilla, but in particular way a different in with the morphology of the TMJ because the TMJ will develop during this period and the, the morphology of the of the condyle and the, of the fossa of the TMJ temporal fossa is strictly connected with the uh, function of the muscles and the, the functional and the morphology of the muscles is strictly connected with the characteristic, the vertical characteristics of the face. So this vertical problem often is strictly connected with the, the transversal problem. And when we have a, a, a lost transversal dimension in the upper maxilla, we can see that the problem is not all inside the upper maxilla with crowding, with a bad position of the teeth, but this transversal problem will uh, create problems in the relation with in the relationship with the the lower arch with the mandible that can remain in a central position, but easily can shift in a, a, a lateral relationship on the left or on the right side, creating an asymmetrical group. Moreover, this uh, um, 
this uh, uh, relationship, transversal relationship between uh, upper and lower maxilla is really very important from sagittal point of, uh, of view too, because if we have a narrow maxilla than normal, this will create a not good relationship with the mandible and the mandible can remain back, creating in the sagittal relationship a tendency to a class two growth, a class two malocclusion. So we are, we are, it's easy to understand that uh, early during the growth, the three dimension, the dimensional relationship inside the mouth between the teeth is really very important because if we have a good relationship, we can have a, a good development of the system and the development of a good occlusion. Otherwise, we will have that the system will start to work in a not correct way, creating a bad relationship in sagittal, transversal, and vertical um, dimension. But one another very important topic to analyze when we try to understand why to treat early is about cooperation. Normally we say that the cooperation is uh, something that is uh, very complex to manage because of we, we largely treat young children, young people, and uh, um, in particular way during, during puberty, this is very complicated. But if we read the, the literature, we can see that if we want to treat with the removable appliances, one of the best period to use the cooperation is exactly early mixed dentition, because in this period we can use the appliance mainly during the night. And this means that we need a short cooperation in particular way in the beginning of the treatment. But I will come back on this concept when I will speak about the uh, the use of uh, LM activators and in general about the use of the appliances that are able to guide the eruption of the teeth. Uh, so actually I know that it is possible to manage cooperation in a good way during the adolescence but this is uh, and it is uh, I, I am sure that this is uh, a common experience of all of us. Uh, this is a very complicated period, in particular way, if we wanted to use an individual activator like a, a Frankel appliance or a twin block or a Sander appliance in a girl about 12 years of age. And uh, at this point, it's, it's uh, clear that we have several reasons to treat early because treating early, we can manage the eruption of the teeth. But at this point, we need to answer to the second question, what to treat and what not to treat. And uh, uh, we come back on the, uh, uh, on the table that we have seen before, and we can analyze the single uh, condition, clinical conditions, uh, and adding some other clinical condition that I think uh, is very important to manage early in my experience. First of all, we have a situation in which we have a cross bite of frontal teeth, one or two incisors. It is quite common because uh, this is a situation that we can find in about seven, eight percent of the children. And uh, we know that when we have this clinical relationship, it, the best period for the treatment is early mixed dentition. Not only because it is very easy to change the three-dimensional relationship between the upper incisors and the lower incisors during their path of eruption, but moreover, because in this way, we can manage, we can intercept, and we can avoid the parodontal problems in the area where we have uh, uh, the, the, the trauma is uh, 
showing his effort. And the uh, second point is uh, the crossbite of lateral teeth, of back teeth. And uh, in particular way, when this clinical situation is strictly connected with the, the drift, the, the shift of the mandible, when we have an occlusion, but there is not a stable occlusion, and the mandible needs to find a lateral relationship so that to, to find a way to, to, to close, to find an occlusion, a stable occlusion, and to create uh, the dissipation of, of the forces so that to, uh, to, um, to hit. Otherwise, it is not possible to reach a, 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 a good function. And uh, we have to, uh, to treat, we can treat all the situation, in particular way in the lower arch connected with the crowding. Because early orthodontic approach reduce the needs of extraction. Because if we are able to guide the, the teeth and in particular way, the four lower incisors in the good relationship between themselves and inside the lower ash in the, in the sector between the two primary canines, we can create a, a situation in which the incisors will grow up in the next years, avoiding the relapse of, uh, um, of uh, crowding. Because of we have a natural increase of space that can arrive to three millimeters of space in the inter uh, canines distance, when during the period in which the permanent lower incisors are up, that is about uh, 14, 18 months. So it is a very long process, but it is very important to manage this process that is, uh, uh, that is uh, connected with another important biological phenomenon that is the drift, the distal drift of the uh, lower canines so that to give space for permanent incisors. And we arrive to the vertical problem, to the treatment of the open bite. The open bite is a kind of malocclusion that is really very complex to manage. Uh, we have several controversial concepts, and we know exactly that the open bite is uh, the missing of incisor contact. But we know that the etiology is still not completely clear because it is connected with the oral habits, speech and swallowing, hypertrophic lymphoid tissues, mouth breathing, low tongue posture at rest, vertical growth pattern, genetic informations. But all these factors are so wide and are so connected with the several functions of the mouth, <coughs> sorry, that it is not so easy to, to manage, in particular way because we are not so sure of the result. But we will speak about this topic in the last, uh, in the last appointment of this series of uh, um, seminars. Another very interesting clinical condition to manage is connected with the class two growth tendency. And this is a very controversial topic because we know that uh, uh, normally we consider to treat class two, class two later during puberty, but we know the alteration of the occlusion is the morphological condition to structure alter functions to give the morphological support to the muscles that are not working well, like the lips or tongue. And if we have a situation like this, we can see to, to wait improving the uh, object and the cluster relationship, in particular way because of the way of function of the lips, in the lower lip, but we can decide to 
intercept to manage this relationship, give the opportunity to the occlusion to reach a class one relationship and a good value of overjet and overbite. And uh, if we are always connected with the class two tendency of growth, we can see in the literature that this relationship will appear very here. And we can see it in particular way in the primary dentition. And this will increase, this relationship will increase worse in effect during early mixed dentition. So we have that uh, uh, just in the research made a lot of years ago, uh, we know that the class two will, it, it is not easy for a class two to transform itself in a class one relationship. But normally this class two relationship will become a worse than class two relationship in about 10, 11 or 12 years of age. Because of all the patterns presenting with a distal step relationship of the second of the deciduous molars demonstrated a class two relationship of the permanent molars, as was shown in the last century. So we can see that all these information are really very old. We know that all these concepts for from a long time and uh, we can use this concept to do in to support our daily work and uh, during the class two relationship we can have uh, another condition in which we don't have an increase of overdraft but we have a reduced overdraft with a change of the inclination of the tip of the lower and upper incisors, creating the condition to develop a class two relationship, division two. And in this way, it's really very common to found a very important deep bite. And it is possible, but it is not easy to correct it, including upper incisors. So to unlock the lower incisors that are exactly in this position. And the deep bite appears very early during the growth. And we can find a very large number of clinical cases that presents a relationship, a vertical relationship that can be defined a dental or a skeletal deep bite relationship. And uh, when this kind of malocclusion appear during primary dentition, it tends to persist after the eruption of permanent incisors and the permanent first molars in the back of the mouth. Another clinical situation that is very common to intercept and to treat every is the tendency to anterior cross bite. And remember that we are today speaking about a general concept of early treatment and about a general concept of the signs that are inside the mouth that appears early during the growth. It is not, we are not saying that all these kinds of malocclusion can be treated uh, completely with LM activators, but a large number of them but we will see in which way in uh, the next appointment. So coming back to the anterior cross bite, we uh, uh, agree that the treatment of class, two malocclusion, class three malocclusion in growing patients is uh, uh, often complicated by growth potential, which very often is not favorable. But in this process, uh, we at the same time know that it is very important to manage the all the all the factors that are around the mouth in particular way all the all the muscles or all, all the way of 
function of the muscles. And uh, if we want, to, we need to treat anterior frostbite, in particular way if, when we, this, this uh, anterior frostbite is involving several teeth, we need to treat between five to seven because uh, all the literature says to us that this, this is the best period to approach this kind of malocclusion. Or all, uh, all the, uh, the clinical situation in which spaces are appearing inside the mouth, uh, in the upper and the lower arches, perhaps because the tongue is not working well, perhaps because the morphology of the teeth is particular and we have a bolt-on relationship that is uh, uh, a it or for other situation. And we have a very large capital that is connected with the bad habits because the correction of the all the bad oral habits is really very essential, is really very important to uh, avoid that uh, the words, the functions, the oral functions that are not working well can create a lot of problems inside the, the mouth. And uh, we can, we need to consider a symmetrical group because uh, when we have a symmetrical relationship in the, and we can see easily looking at the, uh, the middle lines, upper and lower middle lines, but in particular way looking the lateral relationship uh, between the upper and the lower teeth in the transversal uh, dimension, we we know that uh, skeletal treatment is possible during primary and early mixed dentition using simple appliances because in this period the skeletal problem is uh, structuring itself; it is not so completely defined. And uh, this means that we can, uh, we can, and uh, we need to manage a symmetric goal, a symmetric goal that uh, of the of the teeth, a symmetric goal of the mandible and uh, uh, of the maxilla means a symmetric goal of the face. So if we uh, cut uh, a face and we can use the picture in the center, we cut in the middle, and we can create duplicate the left side and the right, the right side, we can obtain two different, completely different phases because in this, on the, on the left, we can see that the vertical dimension is increasing and we have a tendency to uh, vertical, increase vertical growth. On the opposite, if we uh, analyze the right side and we duplicate it, we can create a phase in which the transversal diameters, the transversal relationship is much more important than in the previous case. And uh, moreover, we need to treat uh, protruded incisors because of we need to make prevention for incisor trauma. And uh, we have uh, in Italy, but this is a, a common approach in uh, all, all in, in all European countries. Uh, we have uh, several guidelines from our ministry, uh, ministry that says to us, to us that we need to to treat protruded upper incisors because in this way we can protect them and we can avoid fractura and the trauma on uh, this teeth. And uh, at this point, we can, we can say that uh, we can approach all this situation in general using simple appliances, because uh, if we treat early, we can uh, treat using uh, appliances that requires very simple biomechanical concepts that requires less work, that requires a lower amount of money and can be, can be very effective for several clinical situations. 
uh, like like in this case in which this kind of relationship that seems to be very very complex because of sagittal transversal and vertical complicated relationship can be completely transformed in this other kind of relationship using few centimeters of uh, wires that can that needs to be um, designed in the correct way so that to give the the rotation of the models the close the closing of the space in the anterior area respecting the midlines but in situations like this that give a very interesting uh, effect using only an uh, intra oral appliances two bands and few centimeters of uh, metallic wires we are not controlling the vertical relationship that we know is still very important to avoid a collapse uh, a loss of vertical dimension in this area because actually we have no space here and we can resume in this table uh, all the period uh, that are um, useful to treat uh, several uh, several kind of relationship in class one relationship we can here treat in any mixed dentition in class two any mixed dentition needs at least to be uh, treated in the transversal relationship because of the reasons that we saw before and a large number of class two relationship uh, in particular way with a retruded mandible can be treated in late mixed dentition and early permanent dentition and class three needs to be treated early in particular way to give immediately a sagittal control through the correct position of upper incisors on the lower in uh, incisors and uh, we have we have that uh, uh, the same information can be uh, uh, seen on this uh, other table in which uh, we we can see that the mandible will grow later and so we have a very important period in this uh, period of the grow between 9 to uh, 12 to 15 uh, to manage the mandible growth and the upper maxilla will grow early will increase its global growth early between six to, to eight to nine so we need to remember this different potential growth because we need to manage in a different way and uh, at the end i designed this different table in which we analyze the problem from vertical point of view and all the literature says to us that if we approach the malocclusion from vertical point of view we need to treat the deep bite and the open bite in primary dentition and in particular way during the period in which the primary dentition is changing in early mixed dentition so to manage the relationship between the incisors in the anterior part of the arch and uh, the molars in the first permanent molars in the posterior part of the arch and uh, so i just want to close my presentation with these two slides in which i uh, just want to have a summary of what i said and uh, we need to manage bad habits we need to, to to treat early the vertical problems the open bite and the deep bite all the difficult eruption path in particular way in the anterior part the lateral cross bite and the lateral schistous bite the tendency of growing in class three and in class two and uh, all the situation of uh, uh, crowding so to avoid the wraps from this point of view but we have to pay attention to the several se severe class two or uh, in skeletal class three in all the cases in which we have a uh, Bolton alterated so we have a, a class one relationship 
but a, a very wide space between the incisors. Or the situation in which we have no cooperation from the family and not only from the children, or a B alveolar protrusion, or situation in which we have several crowding that can be treated with a different approach using um, extractions of primary dentition. So I hope that it was uh, interesting for you to uh, remember together this different concept. And I just want to thank you for your time and for following us uh, during this, uh, um, this uh, early afternoon. And I want to remember that uh, in the next webinar, in the next month, uh, the 10th of April, uh, I will speak about the indication and contraindication in the use of enzyme activators during uh, the early mixed dentition and late mixed dentition. So that to uh, have in the next step about the use of an orthodontic tool in uh, this clinical situation that we saw uh, together. Thank you for your attention and I hope to share with you this, uh, uh, this concept in the next appointment. Thank you very much.